Hey guys, Justin here. Quick note, I'm going to be doing a qualifying run and it's going to take a while so feel free to skip ahead to the good stuff. And then also I'm going to be doing a race review. I did the second hour ARCA top split and it didn't go completely according to plan but I go over how you can manage not so great races and turn them into decent results. So stick around for that and if you want any more information feel free to leave a comment down below with a question or join the discord where we're growing a community that can ask and ask advice for all types of oval questions. All right, let's get to the lab. All right, let's take a look at that. So, uh, yeah, super speedway qualifying. Uh, you see some interesting stuff. So I'm just swerving a bit to warm up the tires before I get going. Uh, I tried a lot of dumb tactics, and this was the one that I found worked the best. It saved me maybe two or three hundredths more than just going out regularly. And I tried some other things like burning fuel dragging brake on out lap but uh that little tire swerve there is where i got my best couple temps out of so just swerve back and forth don't spin out and you'll heat up your tires and gain a little time for some reason so the first actual thing to notice is that you can see that i'm not driving up against the wall I'm actually going to be driving on the first seam right here, as opposed to trying to rip as close to the wall as possible. And there's two reasons for this. The first reason is that with uh, the wall, they have some arrow going on that actually drags your car a tiny bit. And I'm not sure how well that affects the ARCA cars or not, but I just, I know that it's better to stay away from the wall at all points during your hot lap. And then the other reason is that if you're up against the wall, you're going to be tightening your exit. Uh, you're going to be turning the wheel a little bit more to get off the corner. And that little bit of extra wheel that you're going to have in the car is going to actually cause a dip in momentum as opposed to uh, keeping up your momentum and raising it off the corner. So you can see that I'm able... So I'm going to keep this marker here. I'm able to keep the orange part of my wheel within this circle and I don't have to turn any more left coming off the corner. And let's see if I do that. Oh. Well, it'd be nice if the thing came back. 
So you see, I never have to turn my wheel to the left anymore. So that's the goal, is smoothness of the wheel, not having to turn anything more to the left coming off the corner. So I'm carrying a good amount of speed, and you can see that I want the sharpest turn as possible into the corner, the narrowest turn. And this is all just about keeping it as close to the yellow line as possible. It's difficult, but you know what to do there. So now here's the second application of keeping your wheel as straight as possible. So you can see that I have my wheel here. If I were to keep along the yellow line on exit, I would have to turn my wheel a little bit more this way. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my wheel exactly straight, and the car is going to do a bit more of an arc off the corner. And you would think that the shorter distance that you would get by turning the wheel a little bit more would save time. But the momentum that you lose by turning your wheel that little bit offsets any gains that you would get and hurts you all the way down the back stretch. So you can see here, let's see how my wheel acts coming off the corner. And you see it never goes any more to the left. I just keep it completely smooth. No more turns to the left once you reach a certain point in the corner. And we're going to do the same thing in turn four. Get all the way down to the yellow. We'll set up our marker here. So from here on out, my wheel is right here. And no more turns. And now the last part about the hot lap is you want to get to the apron as soon as possible. You want to see, you want to cut the apron all the way. Make sure not to touch the grass, that'll ruin your lap. Even if you don't get the 0x or the 1x, it'll you'll lose your momentum. So you can see that I kind of get a drastic turn to the left to get my car pointed just a little bit differently than normal if you were going straight towards the start-finish line. But with this, I'm able to just hold my wheel straight for the rest of the corner and paint the grass, so to speak. All right, so you see a little more time. Just paint the bottom of the grass with your lefts and you'll be able to get a good hot lap here. All right, so I'll do a little race review here. Um, I finished 11th after getting wrecked really early. So we'll see how, how you can manage races after getting wrecked and what you can do to come away with a decent finish. So off the start here, the first thing I want to notice is let's watch the 17 car really quickly. Watch the 17 with the smiley face on the car and he is able to get a massive run by going three wide on the first lap. You see what's happening is he's picking up the draft of the cars in the second lane without having to check up for anybody in front. And this really only works as you're getting up to speed. So you can see that he just builds a massive run and there's nothing we can even do about it. So if you're starting on the outside lane six or seven rows back, maybe consider this move. You might make a couple of people anxious Maybe this isn't something to do with bottom splits, but it really worked out in the short term for this guy here. So the next big lesson here is uh, something that number two in top split did not know, unfortunately, but this is something that everybody that does ARCA should know. You should not bump draft in the ARCA car. That is very important. So we'll see what happens when you do bump draft. Just the littlest bit off center and it kills the entire front of the field. So this is one of those races where it would have paid to start in the back. It doesn't always pay to start in the back because you can get mixed up in a wreck. But if you look at how this wreck unfolded. Pretty much the center completely cleared for everybody to pass through pretty quickly. And if it takes the whole front out, then you can kind of make your way through the wreck and still draft back up to the leaders. So look at this person who was previously in 19th. Or this person that was previously in 17th, he kept his momentum enough. And if you look, when all is said and done, he gets part of a bigger pack and they get back up to the lead three or four. Because if the front pack is only two or three people, they're not going to pull away from a chase pack. 
So that's sort of what happens. That's, so that's one of the reasons you want to start in pack. But this isn't always the case. A lot of the time the wreck will happen from the middle of the pack, in which case that creates a big pack in the front and a big pack in the back. And usually the front will not get caught by the back in that case. So that's why I usually, I usually like to start in first or in the as front as possible in these races for ARCA especially. And you can see for qualifying, I qualified fourth with the 41. If you were able to get down to the 40, like in the example, it would have been a pole there, barely. So let's, let's look ahead. Now I want to show how I took a bad situation and made the most of it. So I was in the most vulnerable position you could possibly be in this wreck. I got a car turned into me and it just shot my car to the bottom. Now here, because it's Arca, I just have to keep on the gas and I have to keep the car straight. So I make sure the car is straight, and then I even get <laughs> round two there. Still keep the car straight, get back on the pavement, make sure not to slide up the track, and I'm back in full on the throttle, and I'm able to keep going, and I get connected to a second pack, which was too small to catch up to the front pack, so we sat half a lap behind the leaders for the entire race, but... The dividends that that pays is that once we get to the last lap of the race, the leaders are going to wreck. 90% of races, the leaders will wreck on the final lap. That's just the fact of life. So you can see here, Big Pack has reconvened with all the leaders, and they all wreck. And as they're scrambling to get to the finish line, all these dead cars, and then it's our job to navigate through it. But it's Arca, we're not lifting here. So, we're approaching the wreck in a 2x2, two two, not lifting, but that'll work out more times than not. If you have to lift, you have to lift, but even there, <laughs> well, a little 4x, what are you going to do? And I was able to come home almost with a top 10 here. If uh, these guys would have wrecked a little earlier, that would have been a top 10, but came home with an 11th, going to not lose anything on my alt. Not gonna do these on my main. I I apologize to the people who dislike alt accounts, but uh, it's not worth it for me, unfortunately. And if you want to look at more Daytona information, I have another video about Daytona. Out. It's more meant for A, B, and C, but a lot of the principles also apply for ARCA as well. Just a couple of them, like crash damage management and caution stuff. Uh, that's not important for ARCA, obviously, but a lot of the ideas of racing and strategy will apply for ARCA as well as NASCAR. So thanks for watching. Not as helpful of a guide as I usually would like to do. Daytona's Daytona, what are you going to do about it? Uh, we'll be back next week with a track that I have not touched in my life before with the Twin Wing. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the track.